So today I wanted to talk about the Heritage Foundation a little bit, and not just about the Heritage Foundation and that infamous quote that they just came out with. Uh, you'll recall that the chairman of the Heritage Foundation uh, came out and told everybody that we are in the process of a second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. So how did we get here, folks? How did we get to a situation where the religious right, which is behind Project 2025, has been able to inject themselves in such a way? Uh, because after all, I mean, these people are the minority. So exactly what is going on here? And the idea behind what they're doing, folks, is that they have a, a singular notion of how the United States should be run. They don't want reproduction rights for women. They don't want to see any mifeprestone distributed anywhere. They want to regulate IVF uh, with this crazy life begins at conception idea. And of course, they have zero LGBT tolerance. So what what in the hell is going on here? It's like this this thing is raging out of control. The radicals have taken over the Republican Party and... You know, Donald Trump is sort of pushing back, and I'll show you what's going on here ahead of the convention. But these people are taking over. So so what is going on here? And folks, I just have to show you this. So the radical right, the radical religious right is facing this scenario, and this is according to a Gallup poll that was done. Look at the attendance of church. So between 2000 and 2003, it was 42%. 2011 to 2013, it was 38%. 2021 to 2023, it was down to 30%. So these people are uh, really backed into a corner here. They're seeing their significance shrinking here. And, you know, the I believe that the, the reason for that, that metric that you see here is largely because of people that are at the Heritage Foundation. I mean, these radicals are the most vocal. I don't think all religious people, you know, whether you're talking about Catholics or Protestants or Methodists, they're not this radical. But yet, it's the, the loudest voices out there, the people that are behind the Heritage Foundation. Those are the ones that everybody hears about. And who wants to be associated with a church with radicals like this at the helm? with no tolerance. I mean, they they are making the churches seem insignificant, intolerant, and overly political. And as I said, um, you know, the vast majority, I think, of religious people out there in the United States are much more moderate. So it's a shame for them that these are the voices that get heard because I think it's contributing to a metric like you see in this Gallup poll here, folks. And, you know, they, they are pushing this agenda of the Project 2025. They think that this is their solution, and they think that Trump is their savior here. They, they see this as the last train away from the station in light of these metrics. But you know what, folks? They don't understand that they're the problem. I mean, they, these people don't get it. They, they are the reason for this metric. But nonetheless, you know, they've challenged ahead, they've forged ahead, and they're pushing this agenda. And I, I talked a little bit about Project 2025, their version of what they would like, you know, for the nation. It's extreme, it's radical, and it doesn't make a bit of sense. And unfortunately, I think... Um, this is the direction that we seem to be heading into. Again, they, they see this as their last chance. And ultimately what they're looking for here, folks, is a constitutional amendment that bans abortion. And that's been the goal all the way going back to Reagan. And I just want to show you this article. So this morning, the Washington Post has this article that just came out. And it's entitled, Tempers Flare as Trump Reviews Revised Abortion Plank for Republican Platform. Again, just this morning, it says Donald Trump has begun to review draft language for the 2024 Republican platform that anti-abortion leaders expect will abandon the party's decades-long call to amend the U.S. Constitution to extend personhood protections to the unborn. 
according to multiple people involved in the discussions, the escalating behind-the-scenes disagreement over abortion language has become so tense and acrimonious in recent weeks that some social conservative leaders have issued public warnings of a coming split within Trump's coalition. Trump allies aren't really concerned about the platform skirmish because evangelicals strongly opposed to abortion have remained among his most fervent supporters, regardless of his evolving positions on the issue. So in the face of this, folks, Trump's advisors have barred the press and C-SPAN cameras from next week's scheduled meetings of the platform committee. That's why they've done this. This is a break in tradition that has alarmed some delegates. So, I mean, this is, this is some interesting stuff here. It's like the radical right is trying to even supersede the Trump campaign and what they're trying to do. And again, they see this as the last train out of Borneo here. If they, if they don't get it, if they don't get what they want on this Trump train, man, I'll tell you what, it's more than likely not ever going to happen. And they're right. And I've said this before that um, Donald Trump is as radical as you can get himself, but he's also being used by even more religious radicals out there, folks. And I strongly believe that if if Trump doesn't win this cycle, this election cycle, things will ultimately go back to normal for the Republican Party. I think you'll see them self-correct and become, I mean, they have to. Right? Can it get any worse? Can we get any more radical between the heritage nut jobs and you've got Trump as radical as he can get, you know, with immigration and the chaos with immigration and the tariffs that he wants to put on, you know, and the ultimate inflation and stock market chaos that would result from that. Um, and then he's also called for this, folks. He's also called for military tribunals. Take a look at this. So I've got to show you this. This is insane. Ann Coulter actually came out and said this the other day. Does he even want to be president? Trump gets an unexpected gift last week and immediately thinks, what can I do to F this up? And that's a quote from Ann Coulter. And she's talking about this. You know, this whole thing where the New York Times had this article, Trump amplifies calls to jail top elected officials and folks military tribunals. A post that Mr. Trump circulated on Sunday called for Liz Cheney to be prosecuted by a military court reserved for enemy combatants and war criminals. Oh my God. I mean, this is insane, folks. This is insane. And, um, you know... The thing about it is his own party, folks, when you look at Doug Burgum, take a look at this. And Doug Burgum, as we know, is the governor of North Dakota, one of the big contenders for VP. And they know, you know, someone like Doug Burgum actually knows that legal immigration is necessary. And to be honest with you, I don't even think Donald Trump, you know, he'll, he'll say, of course I want legal immigration while well, he's sending back 20 million people and not giving any sort of opportunity for people to, you know, become citizens in that process. But his own party, when you look at this article, this is coming to us directly from Burgum's office. It says, Burgum signs bill creating office of legal immigration to help address North Dakota's workforce challenges. Bismarck, North Dakota, and this is uh, an article that actually came out uh, from his office April 21st of 2023, but Governor Doug Burgum today signed bipartisan legislation creating an Office of Legal Immigration within the North Dakota Department of Commerce to help businesses recruit and retain foreign labor and address the state's workforce challenges. The Immigration Office will develop a pilot program to support businesses pursuing or employing legal immigrants and help communities develop plans and activities to integrate immigrants. So, folks, that's exactly where the Democrats are in this whole situation. That's what we want, you know, is legal immigration. So we're really not that far apart, uh, except when you get into what the religious right and radical extremists have been able to do in conjunction with Donald Trump's own radical ideas, you know, to the Republican party. If we can get through this cycle, I think that you'll see a lot more consensus between Democrats and Republicans. And here's an example of that folks till next time.